Hey, welcome to the Connect at Cornerstone podcast. This is Pastor Mike, and it's been a couple of weeks since I've joined you. We took a family vacation, so we were gone, and uh, everything's been a little bit crazy around here. So we got started back meeting in person, so we're two weeks into that now. Uh, So I wanted to give you an update about that today, Uh, give you an update about some of our summer plans, uh, as well talk about our sermon series, uh, and just uh, let's uh, just jump right in. So lots of things to go over today. So first of all, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for taking time to listen or watch this. Uh, It's just another way that we have to keep everyone connected and to to share information um, and to let you know our heart. Uh, and so this is really, uh, I, I, I count it a, a blessing and an honor that I get just every time I get to share something with you guys. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your continued support of our church and your generosity. I want to thank you for your continued prayers for our church. I want to thank you for your attendance, for those of you that have joined us the last couple of weeks, and uh, whether in person or online. I'll, I'll share a little bit about the in-person uh, experience in case you've missed it. So for two weeks now, we've had in-person services. Uh, I'll kind of give you an update about how that's been going. Um, it's been uh, it's been really interesting. And for me, uh, I, I love being able to look out and see people's faces as we're joining together in worship and, 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 and preaching. And, and so we've really done it in a way that I think, um, um, you know, we've uh, consulted all sorts of the, uh, the guidelines from the state level and the national level and the CDC and local health professionals. And we've looked at everything we can to do it in a safe way. And so uh, we've done things uh, like you'll see our greeters. They have signs holding up because they're not going to shake your hand or give you a hug, even though they want to. Uh, we're trying to, to do, do this in a, in a safe way. We've got hand sanitizing stations when you come in. We've got masks available. If you don't have one, you can pick one up and wear it. Uh, we are continuing to wear masks right now. Um, I know our state, Virginia, is going into phase three uh, this week, which is exciting to see. But at the same time, it really doesn't change anything for us as a church. Um, and for a couple of reasons. It, it, phase three uh, enables groups to meet up to 250 people, but there's still social distancing requirements and there's still the requirement of wearing a mask. So for us as a church, it really doesn't change what we're doing on Sunday morning. And then on top of that, you consider that the local number of cases, although it's leveled off somewhat, we're still seeing some jumps um, from day to day. Today was another uh, fairly large jump. So we've got to be careful uh, and do what we can to prevent and, and keep this from continuing to spread into our most vulnerable populations. And, and that's really why we're asking that you wear a mask. It's not just for you, it's for the others around you. Uh, and then you think about not only you and your, you know, your family, but the other families that are here, and then their parents and grandparents and, and little children and people that are immunosuppressed and uh, it really is. We've just got to, 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 to really think about what we can do to help others in this time. So uh, it's a small sacrifice that we make, but it's one that when we do it, uh, man, I- I'm so thankful we can still get together and worship. So there's just something about being in person and being here uh, and looking at each other and being able to catch up and, and hear about how things are going. So Thank you guys that have been attending. Uh, If you've been holding back and you're like, I'm not quite sure yet, hey, we understand that's fine. Um, But I will invite you to start thinking about when will you be able to join back in with us and and think through that. And uh, the reality is, um, really, I think we're looking at uh, a a risk uh, of catching COVID now. Um, I, I think we're looking at a risk for, for the next six to eight months. Uh, I, this is not going to go away next week or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. Uh, and so we've got to think about how we can uh, go about everyday life and do it in a safe way um, and, and take the necessary precautions. Um, and so that's really what we're trying to do. I, I'll share a little bit about children's ministry just because um, I know I've had several questions about that. Um, one, now what we're doing right now, and Brandy's done a great job of getting together children activity packs. So if you bring a child to church on Sunday morning, 
We've got an activity pack waiting. They can pick up and everything from individual coloring sheets and their own crayons. And it's not anything you share. Everything's pre-packaged, pre-bagged for you. Um, and it's a whole pack of activities for them during the service. And I'll tell you, that's been going great uh, the last few weeks. So as I've looked out, the kids are doing an awesome job of staying with their parents and being involved. And uh, we've really, as a church, this is something we've done for a long time anyway, for our special services, things like Christmas. We've always had the whole families together because we believe uh, that it's important for the children to see their parents worship uh, and to be part of that and not just always be separated. So even we bring the kids up for worship time often and once a month. Uh, and so you'll see them upstairs a lot. Uh, and so this is not anything uh, drastically different. We're just doing it every week right now. We're just asking that the children stay with their families. Now, going forward, we do have a plan for reintroducing children's ministry, and we're not sure when that's going to start, but we're working on it. Brandy, again, has come up with a really good plan for our volunteers and for our children, um, and so you'll be hearing a little more about that. Uh, we're at least a month out. It really depends, again, locally how things continue to go and trend, um, and, and we'll do uh, and just on the advice of others that we have and the, the health, uh, you know, our health professionals and, and local officials, but we're, we're, we're looking at it. We're getting ready for it. So when we can start meeting again, uh, we'll have a plan in place. So uh, I'll share that with you. Uh, a few other things that I'll mention uh, just as in form of updates. One is that uh, we had our drive through community meal last night. Again, it went great. Uh, you're seeing such a need and such appreciation from our community uh, for that. Um, and so that's, that's really gone well. Uh, I look forward to the time when we can get in our new building uh, to have those community meals. And our new building is almost done. We're, uh, it's almost every day now. We've got projects going on. We've got some guys here now working right as I'm filming this. So we had a group last night. We've got a work day planned Saturday morning from 9 to 12. Um, we've got lots of little projects going on right now, but the, the, overall, uh, the overall update is that we're getting closer and closer to being able to open. Um, and so when we are able to open that facility, uh, that's where we can have our youth meetings. That's where we can do our community outreach events. And so I, I'm just so thankful for the, the many people who have been volunteering their time I'm thankful for the many people whose generosity has enabled us to, to, uh, to work on this building and get it ready. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'm telling you, it's going to blow you away. Uh, it's, it, it just, it's absolutely amazing the transformation that has taken place uh, from when we started last year. So uh, if you get a chance and you see somebody working here, stop in. We'll give you a, a quick tour. But we, uh, again, it's just been awesome to see uh, how this is going to be another tool to help us reach our community for Christ. Uh, one other thing I'll mention real quick is that uh, I'll give you kind of a, a heads up, a jump start here a little bit. We're using a new church software package called Planning Center, uh, and that helps us do everything from track our life groups to uh, have sign-up forms that you see on our website uh, to uh, actually plan and schedule volunteers uh, so we've got lots of things going on with that, but they have a, a really cool app that goes along with it, and it's called Church Center. And you'll download this app, and the first time you log into Church Center, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, kind of go through a login process, and it'll, and it'll find out what church you're a part of and kind of link you up with that church. So then every time you log in, uh, you can go straight into Cornerstone Community Church. And the neat thing about this app is that, it, one, it lists all of our upcoming events, uh, so you can actually go in and register and, uh, uh, and see our events uh, coming up. Uh, the second thing it does, it enables you to check in your children on Sunday morning. So when we start meeting again with children's ministry, you can actually pre-check your kids in. So you're in the car on the way to church. You can actually go, hey, I'm on my way. We're going to check in the kids for the 915 service or the 11 a.m. service. It gives you a barcode. You just walk in, scan that barcode. It spits your labels out, and you're ready to go. So you don't have, it really speeds that process up. So uh, it's really a, a cool feature uh, that we have there. Not only that, it enables you to sign up for life groups. So you can see a listing of all of our different life groups and sign up for our groups from there. 
And then uh, moving forward, there will be even more features that are added to that in the coming weeks and months. So uh, lots of things kind of in, in process and plan. But if you go ahead and download that app, you can start using it now. So again, just a heads up for it. I'll, give, I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, as you're watching this or on our website, so you can kind of go ahead and find that app and, and log in. But it's really, it's going to be a neat way for us to stay connected. Uh, next, I kind of want to talk about our sermon series. We're finishing up. We're on week eight of a sermon series called Unstoppable. And so as we started into this whole um, this whole um, quarantine, or really, uh, season, uh, you know, I, I thought, what, I kind of, I kind of pulled an audible and changed everything around what we were planning on, and I jumped into the book of Acts. And the reasons I did that is because when we look in the book of Acts, we see how the early church grew in spite of problems and obstacles and persecution. Um, And we see that the church not only grew, but it thrived in in that time period. And, And so there's a lot we can learn from that. And that's really what we've been doing. We've been seeing how the kingdom of God was unstoppable um, in the early church and how we can, can, can learn from that and, and, and use that as we continue to reach our community. So uh, this week we're wrapping it up, week eight. We're talking about what it looks like to live a life on mission. Um, and so if, if you have been keeping up to date, this is really going to show, okay, the book of Acts, you see this early church growing, you see it spreading. What does that mean to us today? Uh, what does that mean as we get to Acts 28 uh, and, and now beyond? Oh, if there was an Acts 29, and there's not, but if there were a, a chapter 29 and it was about us, what would be written in it? And so that's going to be the message this week. Um, I really encourage you, again, invite someone, join us, join us online or join us in person. But this is a message that you don't want to miss because I think it's really important for all of us to understand what God has called us to do and who he's called us to be. Then after that, um, again, I'm, I'm changing things up just based on what we're experiencing. One of the topics I feel like we've got to talk about is social faith. What does it look like to have faith in the world of social media, online? I know you see this, and it's not just me, but we're seeing the world divided. We're seeing people talk at each other instead of with each other. Uh, And so how do we rise above that? How do we take a stand for Jesus and not be a jerk? That's really uh, what a lot of this is going to be about. How can we continue to use the tools that we have at our disposal to share the love of Christ and the message of Christ to a world that needs it. And I'm telling you right now, the world needs it more than ever. And so I invite you to to join us for this. We'll be starting not this week, but the following week. Um, And so we're going to spend a few weeks just going through what it looks like and and what we say and and how we have self-control and Now, just biblical principles that will guide us and how we live our life in a world that's gone crazy. Um, And so, again, I don't have to remind you that this is an election year, so things are going to get worse before they get better, right? So this is an important topic for all of us. So, uh, again, this will be a a sermon series that that you need to listen to and you need to be involved with and share with as many people as possible. Uh, I think that's really, I didn't have a lot to talk about today, but thanks for kind of hanging in this long. Uh, Really, I I ask for your continued prayers for our church. I think every church, um, I shared this with our staff uh, meeting this week, is going through a process of really starting over. And, And what I mean by that is now that we've not met in person for three months and now as churches are starting back meeting again, it's like, it's like we're starting over in many respects. And um, I, I really feel like this is when we can't get complacent. Uh, we can't take things for granted. Uh, we need to continue understanding what our mission is as a church, to make disciples who love God and who love others. And as we do that, as we continue to do that, as we see people experience that new life in Christ and we see them equipped to follow Christ and then they go and engage our community in a world for Christ, I'm telling you, it's, uh, God is not done with us yet. 
God is not done with His church. God is not done with us here at Galax. Uh, but it's going to take all of us working together uh, to really continue to see the kingdom of God grow and explode and be unstoppable just like it was in the book of Acts. That can happen here in Galax, Virginia, in the Twin County area, and it could grow and expand, and we could see revival take place that changes not only our community but can change our world. And so I ask that you be praying about that. I ask that you continue to pray for the safety and the health of the people in our community, especially those who are vulnerable, those in our nursing homes, those in our hospital, those who have compromised immune systems. Let's pray for them. Uh, let's pray for them. At this point, we all know people who have had COVID-19. And I can tell you, this is not a hoax. This is worse than uh, the seasonal flu. We are seeing the effects of it. And if you haven't, then talk to someone who has had it or, and find out from them and talk to someone who has lost a loved one. And so let's continue as a church to reach out and provide hope uh, and provide comfort and let's do everything we can as a church to be Christ for those uh, who don't know Christ. We've been called uh, into a ministry of reconciliation. We've been called ministers of reconciliation. If you go and read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, you, you can read about that. And our job is to reconcile, the, reconcile the world to Christ. In other words, what do we do? We point people to Jesus. We just keep pointing them to Jesus so they can find the hope that we have in Christ. Thanks for joining us again on Connect at Cornerstone. Uh, I look forward to seeing you hopefully in person very soon. Um, and so if not, uh, continue to join us online and let us know, as always, if there's anything you need, any way we can pray for you, any way we can come alongside your family and support you. God bless and thanks.